Hey boys and girls, um, welcome back to Monroe Live. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, sitting in front of me is the electronics bay that we took out of the Tesla Model Y. Now, all you folks that have been watching uh, can probably recognize some of these components, but what you probably see is an, um, an amazing amount of stuff, then you wonder to yourself, how, the, how did this ever get put together? Well, um, today what I'm going to be showing you is the new way of manufacturing. And we're going to show you how you can put together even the most complicated of product utilizing this very um, simple operation. One thing is over here on my left is the steps that are going to be needed in order to create what I'm going to be doing here in putting this product together. On my right is going to be a description of the part that I'm going to be looking at. And while I'm looking at all these things, there's going to be lights coming down to tell me where to put that part so I don't have to refer to a drawing or memorize it or anything else like that. This is absolutely a phenomenal way of entering the new age of manufacturing. So the first thing I'm going to be pointing out is there's a light all the way around the outside of the base plate for the, uh, for the bay for the electronics bay. So that light tells me where I'm going to take whatever product I've got and put it into the fixture. Once I see that light around the outside edge, that means that I'm in the right place to do the job properly. Now, I have to get going, so I go over here and uh, if you can see, you'll see that down here it says press the button to begin. I'm going to come down here, I'm going to hit the button, and it's going to show me, you can see right now, you can see that green flashing, green and white flashing light. And it says, oh, something's got to go here. So I look at the screen on the right hand side and it says, hey, you got to get this cover plate. So here's the cover plate and I put it in place after I get rid of these other wires. I put it in place and boom, it's done, right? So now I, got, I can just move forward. So I push the button again. And it says, hey, you got to pick up some four screws. Well, over here, you can see the little green box. So we got one here. And one over here. And it's tight for my fingers. Another one here. And another one. Now, now that I've hand started them, and I've broken all the different light beams. Now what I got to do is I have to pick up the socket. You can see where the green part was and then I'd crank them down. For today we're not going to do that. So I put that back and I say forward. So now we've got this and now you can see that the screen is showing me that there's something that has to go over this. And if I look at the screen here on the uh, <clears throat> on my right, this is what I need to put in place. So there's a little teeny video here showing me that there's some rocking guides here. So I have to snap into those, snap into those guides. But there we go. All right. So now we got this thing in spot. Now I can say forward, what's next? And what's next is this orange component right here. We can see where this is uh, supposed to go. We can see it's right down here. So I can take the product put it over the top of the connectors and uh, it also tells me that there's a screw yeah, and there it is. So now I got to get the next part and the next part up oh, two large screws. So even though I was running over to grab another part, this is exactly why we have this kind of a system. It allows me to not make a mistake. So we got two screws here that we start and you can see that um, you can see down here that this now is flashing. So we used that one before. Now we're using this one. And this is how I'd uh, basically crank that down. So I've returned the wrench. So this is a bus bar cover. So we're going to take that. And I look over here to see how it's going to be put on. There we go. And it snaps in place. OK, so now, now we've seen that uh, if you try and put it in the wrong place, it's going to come back and tell you, hey, dummy, put it over here. So. Let's go to the next part. The next part is one of the two few two hoses to locate the fuel line or sorry, a coolant line. So we can see green and green. I'm guessing. I don't have to guess actually. So I snap that in there. 
<coughs> and we're done. Next, okay, so again, here's the green lights. Let's put it in here, shove it down there, done. Next, and now we've got, we've got the uh, high voltage connectors. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is my first time putting this together. It's not working out. How about this way? There we go. Two large screws. So let's move in here. Take two large screws out and put them here. And then I take my large wrench and crank it down. Okay, so let's, um, let's now look at uh, probably what's going to be the most challenging part. And that's putting this, uh, this harness in place. Okay, so we can see the light here telling me where I need to place these wires. So the first thing is we make this connection here. So let's get this one here. This is going into the yellow one. And you can see that the little green dot is showing up as soon as I get done. And then we've got one over here. And now we're moving to the next yellow one, which I... And then we've got another connector right here, also difficult. Over here to this connector right here. We've got that one done. Oh, there. Now we got this. And this, and this, and this, this one here, this one black to black, I'm guessing. Black to black, gray to gray, and tout fini. So let's go into the last part, which is, um, which is the um, high voltage fuse. It's got two little lo locating points, and now we've got a couple of bolts. Okay, so let's take two of these bolts. <clears throat> and I would take a wrench, clickety-clack, and get that done, and return the wrench, and call it a day. And I could be wrong, but I think. Oh, I've got just the one last piece, which is <clears throat> this one. So, um, first we'll put it in the right way. And then we take this. There we go. So I, uh, I'm done as far as, uh, as, far as uh, the assembly are concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you park this whole thing together. And now what I'd like to do is, um, is have you uh, talk to the, the, the chief here and uh, have a, a little discussion about what he's done and how he's done it. And so let me introduce Paul Reisner, the CEO of uh, Light Guide Systems. And um, can you tell us first off a little bit about yourself and, uh, and a little bit about how you're working with the different OEMs, not just automotive, like, like the Tesla thing here, but, but other, other car companies and other companies in general about what's going on. Yeah, great, Sandy. Great job, by the way, building the battery. Hard to believe that was the first time you'd ever built this battery before. So, yeah. so we are basically an augmented reality work instruction uh, company that uh, projects step-by-step -step work instructions to guide people through every step of a manual process just by following lights. So the goal here, just like you saw when you were assembling the Model Y battery here, is that you shouldn't have to look at screens anymore for information. You can basically get all of your work instructions right on the workflow. And it really is a defect prevention type of a tool rather than a defect detection tool. There's a lot of differences there because similar to like a GPS for driving your car, we're essentially a GPS for manufacturing where we give it right information at the right place, the right time, so complex processes like building a battery become as simple as, as just following the lights. Right. The other thing is, and I appreciate a couple of those steps where maybe you drop a bolt or maybe you struggle a little bit getting the connector you know, properly connected. We're capturing a lot of analytics for every step of the process. So you're getting this real time time study. So you can see, and it ties right in with the great work Monroe Associates is doing, where you design for manufacturing to make sure a bolt will go in smooth or a connector will snap properly. But if there's people struggling with certain steps within the process, that gets highlighted now through the analytics that we're capturing, yeah. 
where we're ob obtaining cycle times for every individual step of a process. So that becomes a bit of an input maybe into the design process to make sure that bolt should just you know, go right into the hole properly without somebody dropping it or the connector uh, is always connected you know, properly. So that combination of the great work that Monroe's doing on the design side and then the great work we're able to do to make sure that the, the manufacturing for design is being assembled or inspected properly is a great fit for not just the automotive world, but aerospace, defense, consumer electronics, even food, you know, making a perfect pizza every time. This whole value proposition that you just did a great job going through, uh, it can be applied to almost any product or even almost any process around the world. Um, I think that having something where operators don't have to spend a long time trying to learn to put the product together is a really good idea. If we're going to try and compete with, if everybody wants to do onshoring and things like that, right. and we're going to try and compete with uh, the Chinese or the Japanese or anywhere, yeah, even, in, even in, uh, in Germany, if we're going to try and compete, we've got to be able to get up to speed in a hurry, and this is what I, I like the most about it. It gets me up to the speed in a hurry, allows me to have 100% uh, inspection or 100% placement of the products. Dr. Ono would be, uh, Dr. Ono and, and uh, Shingu Shinku would be very happy uh, with what you've got going on here. So. Well, you know, we try to make it so visual intuitive with these work instructions, yeah. Sandy, that again, it just really becomes so simple to build something like this. But what it also does is it allows for almost unlimited variation at a workstation. Right. So instead of having to set up separate dedicated assembly lines for different part numbers, you could bring many of those different part numbers right. under the same type of a workstation with the power of augmented reality work instructions to make sure that across 100 different variations of batteries at this station, for instance, everyone is done right. Yeah. And even though today we were using the, uh, the manual uh, you know, socket and torque wrench, you know, this could be, like you mentioned, an electronic smart right. torque gun that we could interface in with light guide software and be able to make sure that right. the right torque and angle and everything else uh, had, had been met. So um, it's also really interesting to see from a training standpoint Typical return on investments for our offline training stations with Light Guide are six weeks or less because it eliminates training variation. Because mm -hmm. if I train somebody on how to build this battery and, and you train them, we're both going to train them a little bit differently. But if there's a system like Light Guide that can really make sure they're building with best practices right from the very first cycle that they run, mm -hmm. it eliminates training variation and it also frees you and I up if we're the trainers to go do more value added work like solve problems or build product rather than I'm gonna shadow you and I'm gonna train you for the next 10 hours here, you know? Yeah. So the, the payback of, of Light Guide for a training uh, system is, is tremendous in addition to what you just showed here with the assembly or even inspection and part kitting as well we can yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, well, the big thing for me is um, I don't have to have process sheets and uh, getting people to follow process sheets is difficult. This way, um, the process is always going to be consistent. And that, to me, again, is something that's uh, kind of important. So there's, a, there's definitely a productivity aspect to that, but there's a quality aspect of it as well, because you have to associate what's on the screen to the physical part itself. And there's errors that are made as you make that association. But if you can project it right on the actual you know, work itself, now that's where it all comes together. It's, it's not the, like the screen, right information at the right time, but not at the right place. Here, everything is at the right time, right place, with the right information. So our goal is you could hang a blanket over the, the monitors or even the paper-based work instructions and almost receive 100% of your work instructions on your natural yeah. workflow. So I I'm, I'm really appreciate the, the opportunity to come down here and watch how this was put together. I think that, um, I think that the uh, viewers are going to be kind of interested in this and hopefully it brings some more business in your direction. Yeah, well, we're running in 34 countries around the world right now, and we're growing very quickly as truly an international product. And uh, we look forward to working together with Monroe Associates and the whole team there on opportunities like this in order to really advance manufacturing, you know, to make sure the parts yeah. built right every single time and uh, with the right productivity as well. Good, excellent. Well, thank you very much for letting me come in and have a look. And uh, boys and girls, uh, we're going to bid adieu. And uh, I'm also going to actually recommend again, um, things are tough right now, especially in Michigan. Um, tip those cashiers. Uh, they're risking their life every day to sell you a can of beans or some rolls of toilet paper. Um, and uh, stay tuned. We're going to have uh, quite a few more interesting things that I think you're going to really get a kick out of. It. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Bye.